Park and well met everybody. Welcome to the Sunday lunch stream. Today, uh, I'm going to do what I do best and I'm gonna farm all of you for YouTube content. <laughs> it's my favorite activity to do on Sundays. So thank you all for coming in. So we are going to be raiding the stone tools that we see in video games. I'm gonna give them a rating based on how accurate I think they are, historically speaking, or just how good I think they look and what, what things I think they could be drawing from. And maybe just talking a little bit about where we think they're coming from culturally. Ladies and gentlemen, if any of you are watching on YouTube right now in the future, your present, but our future, thank you very much. And feel free to hit the subscribe button at the bottom of the screen right here. It helps me out tremendously. I'm working towards getting to, you know, more and more YouTube content. I want to vary it up between these sort of like archaeology discussion videos and actual like archaeo gaming videos. I'm happy to have you along, even if you don't come watch me on twitch.tv, which you should also do, slash Runemeister Chris. You can find it in the description. But anyway, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching my YouTube video. So here you have in front of you a collection of stone tools, right? Here's some really good examples. So some of the features that I'm going to be looking at are going to be how accurate I think these games do compared to these uh, uh, tools. Tools come in a variety of different shapes, styles, sizes. I am going to give a little bit of a, a leeway on these. Let's start with Minecraft. I'm sure everybody's pretty familiar with uh, the Minecraft weaponry, right? So the stone tools of Minecraft uh, everyone should be acutely aware of. They're pixelated, uh, not them, <laughs> and it's kind of hard to judge when you're doing something based on that, but I think that it's important that we hold all games accountable for their accuracy, Minecraft included. So right off the bat, we're gonna look at this. That's a, that's a, a, a stone axe. The axe head has kind of a blade to it because it's, it's gonna look very similar to how they would do it in the other ones too, like when they get diamond or whatever. Although diamond tools, I could get into a whole affair about that, but. <laughs> So looking at the pickaxe, it looks like how you would expect a pickaxe. It's got pointed heads on both sides, right? Not all pickaxes look like that. In fact, a lot of pickaxes, they have this kind of back handle. You would use it like a like a shovel because pickaxes are tough. Other ones, you'll see that they look kind of like modern. They're, they're almost like a hoe, right? So at times when you would have a pickaxe or a hoe or an adz, Ads, however you want to say it. They wouldn't necessarily look like that traditional one. Like this is a Bronze Age old C. They have this kind of like weird, it's actually a lot of wood and the, the axe part of the pickaxe is just the, the front uh, attachment there. I mean, the big, the big factor, because the vast majority of stone axes and pickaxes that you're gonna see are the piece of stone fastened around the center with wood or cord or something like that. So in terms of Minecraft, they have, the, the head is enveloping the stick and there doesn't seem to be any kind of lashing or anything on there. Not to mention that the shape is kind of like flared out, which is not out of the question, right? Because we have ones like this where you can see now the shape here, that's actually from the stick being bound to it. So looking at the axes in Minecraft, I'm gonna have to definitely give Minecraft like a two out of 10. They give it the effort. Moving on, we've got Valheim next. Uh, so I was talking about right now about how I pref how most of the axes were lashed on. And while that is true, that most of the axes were lashed on or secured to the head or even just served mainly as the tip compared to the stick, there are instances where the stone part is the core of the tool, right? And then the stick goes through it. The issues that these games have is that they're looking for they, they want to make the visual of the axe the important part, right? So they show the axe blunt, like uh, the head of the axe as the main part, and then the stick kind of goes through it. Because visually, when you're looking at a thumbnail or something, it's going to be a lot easier to tell what it is when you have the entire axe head around it. But the vast majority of artifacts, Neolithic artifacts, Stone Age artifacts, are going to be uh, uh, having the sticks and the lashing or the bone or whatever fastening thing 
envelop around the head of the, uh, the, the, the stone part of the axe, just because it makes it stronger, more secure. And also, just in order to get the stick through the center of the axe, you would have to bore a hole through the axe, it's, uh, the axe head itself in order to get the stick through. And if you're gonna try and do something like that, that's a huge amount of effort. And back in the Neolithic age, your entire life was based around the amount of effort that you were putting into your daily tasks. The reason why stone tools began to be a thing is because they made your life easier, right? You just take a rock, you tie it to a stick, and then you have, a, you have an ax that you can use to do whatever you want to do. If you're spending hours or days to use other tools to drill a hole through the center of your ax head so that you can get a stick through it so that you can use it, that's not going to be the case. Here we go. So this is one of the only instances where I've seen something like this. And you can do something like that, certainly. You can certainly do that where you can get the axe, like the head of the axe through the stick. It just involves drilling that hole, which is a big effort. And when you're burning calories to make a big effort, it makes the, uh, the usefulness of the axe uh, a lot less useful. You know what I mean? Valheim, uh, uh, probably still better um, because of the shape of the axe. So Valheim, let's see if there's an example of a Scandinavian. Okay, cool. So here we go. This is what I'm talking about. There are instances where people will drill through it. It's not as common, but it looks like that seems to be the case when I search up the Scandinavian ones. There are definitely instances where they will drill the hole through the axe head. So it looks like that was the case in Scandinavia. I will bump up Valheim's points a little bit for that because it seems like they did research on very Scandinavian specific style stuff, which looks like they did go through the effort of drilling the hole uh, uh, through the axe head. You know, looking up the stone axes specifically in Scandinavia get all of these results, whereas looking up stone axes in general uh, got us a lot less of those results. So I will give Valheim's weapon uh, for its simplicity. It doesn't really feature much in the way of cording or anything like that. I'll give them a 7 out of 10. A 7 out of 10 for Valheim. Keep in mind that I am being very, very uh, critical on this. Next up is Ark. Ark Survival Evolved, a game that we are all familiar with on this channel, because I play it a lot. Looking at the stone pick, they do the same thing. They have the, the handle of the axe going through the pick itself, which we know is a thing that happens, even though it's not as common. But it does also have the cording to lash it down, which is good, because that shows the 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 need to, to affix it into place, right? And the stone hatchet <clears throat> has the stick around the head of the axe. That looks a lot more legit. But yeah, looking at Ark's tools, um, they're actually pretty good. Uh, I'm I'm less upset with Ark's. Uh, so the one thing that I will say, and now this is extremely nitpicky. Eh, you know what? I'm not going to pick on this as much. I was going to say like a lot more axe heads are really just like pretty uniform in shape. Like they don't have that kind of like curved bladed front that you see a lot of times in these like gaming axes. Because a lot of times they're just like that. I mean, obviously there are cases where it kind of looks like that. Maybe it's not as be as as pretty as as Ark makes it out with these little pointed flare tips. So I'll I'll dock them a point on that. I think I'm willing to give Ark like a nine out of ten. I think I'm, I'll give them a nine out of ten for their stone tools. Seven days to die. We played the stone axe at seven days to die. Oh, that's not bad. That's not that's not bad right there. Ah, it's gone through many iterations. The the earlier one I actually like better because if you see like like the uniform shape of it, um, that's kind of more in line with what you see with a lot of stone axes and tools and stuff. They're kind of square, like rectangular in shape. But ultimately, this is not terrible. I mean, it's just a rock on a stick, and like I get that. It's just a rock on a stick. Yeah, I'll give I'll give them I'll give them like a like a eight or nine out of ten as well. So guys, this is a sneak peek. There's a chance I may try out The Forest soon, which is like a survival horror game. You know, it's a survival game like what we do, but I think it's a little more like horror-y. Less archaeology, but uh, still probably pretty fun. Looking at their crafted axe. Um, it's, it, the rock is weird. It's a weird shaped rock. It's not really worked at all. I mean, in terms of this, like, there's there's no real evidence of flint napping. Flint napping is the process by which you go about making these stone tools. And what it means is that you take flint, <laughs> right? And you will chip away at the edges. That's what they're talking about here, chip stone axes. And you chip away at the edges so that you can see, like, the little, where the, where the pieces popped off. 
Maybe I'll do a flint napping stream one time. Yeah, it will be very hard to do a flint napping stream. I really want to, but I think that has to wait until we get to the new house, so stick tight. Yeah, when you chip away like that, that's going to knock off the edges, it's going to give the blade its sharpness, right? Like this website talks about it, they also have um, grinding where you can where you can grind the axes down to the edge, just like kind of smooth them out like that. Shaft hole axes. Um, here we go, shaft hole axes. Yeah, see, characteristic of the Neolithic period in Scandinavia. What did I give Valheim? Did I give them a 7 out of 10? I should probably bump them up. I'll bump Valheim up a little bit. If I gave them a 7 out of 10, uh, uh, I'll bump it back up to a, like a 9 out of 10. Because they were actually going through real historical accuracy. Like I said, it, it, I doubt anyone's going to get a perfect 10 out of 10 on this. So looking at this, yeah, this is just a blunt, this is just a blunt, weirdly shaped rock. So they definitely get some points for this. So I'm going to actually give them, I'm going to give them a, f a 5 out of 10 for the forest. Now I know the person's in an emergency and they like crashed on a plane or whatever, but... Still, not ideal. Conan Exiles, Stone Tools. So let's take a look. So, this is the same sort of deal. The hatchet, I'm actually much more impressed with. If you are going to do a triangular shape to the rock that you're doing this with, at least try and make it look more natural. You know, like, there's a, there's a, there is the possibility of having it, like, flare out towards the tip. Like this one here. It has some flare out to it, which is what you see uh, in the Conan one as well. A bit of a flare out. This one's a little bit more even, but that's fine. That's okay. You gotta make it look pretty too. And uh, so I'm okay with that because it does make it really good for fastening it on, having like the shorter engine and the more momentum on this one. So I am I am really impressed with the stone axe uh, from Conan. The pick, on the other hand, is okay. They do bring the stick up around the edge of the pickaxe blade, and actually zooming in. I know it's I know it's hyper pixelated, but zooming in. Um, I actually feel like I can tell the, um, that the pickaxes worked a bit, which was something that I didn't think. I thought it was just like this perfectly cylindrical, like uniform pickaxe head. Again, none of the pickaxes, all of the pickaxes are adhering to the shape. I'm trying to see if I can find an example like that, because the vast majority of pickaxes that you're going to see, uh, don't look like that. I mean, they're all kind of more in this line. It's, it's basically like just a regular axe. Or, like I said, these examples where they have an extra handle on there and it's kind of more like, an, like an, a hoe or a pickaxe or something along those lines. And I know the reason why is because A, they need to make it separate from the actual stone axe. But, um, so the pickaxe is, uh, I'm a little bit less keen on that one. But the axe I'm pretty happy with. So let's give Conan, let's give Conan um, a 9 out of 10. Because they, do, they have evidence of flint napping, they have a decent shape, and they have the lashings. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm, I'm, to be fair... And a stipulation that maybe I should have gone over at the beginning. And I am not a Neolithic archaeologist, I'm a historic archaeologist, meaning that I deal with things that happen during the course of, of written history. You know, my specialty was in Scandinavian Vikings. I'm just like, I think that there wouldn't have been as big a distinction between axes and pickaxes in prehistory that we attribute to it today. And I know that in the context of the game, you need to be able to differentiate between the like wood cutting tool and the stone cutting tool. Right? And so that's why you have the pickaxe to chip away at stone and you have the axe to chip away at wood, when in reality, they were probably extremely similar tools to the vast majority of Neolithic people. They probably did a lot of the same things, or they would use one tool to do all of that. And this is just for fixed ones. I'm not even going to get into stone hand tools, which were probably the, the that was the majority of Stone Age tools. You, it was literally just a rock that you held and you just chopped at things with the axe or like you, if you were skinning an animal you would just cut at it with the axe head directly you didn't have it on like a handle okay so there is this game on steam that i haven't uh that i haven't gotten around to playing yet but the game is called ancestors and i don't know if i'm going to play ancestors the humankind odyssey i looked at videos for it and it's so morbid it's literally like you play as you play as like almost a homo erectus it's like a pre it's like a missing link between apes and humans, or even like cavemen, something along those lines. And you're basically playing like upright apes who uh, just have to survive in the ancient times, but they don't actually make it out of the Stone Age. That's like the thing. It's like, oh, it's, it's just that point. And uh, based on the videos, it's just like, it, it, it seems like the whole game is basically just like, hey, I'm going to make you feel really upset about these monkeys dying to tigers and like their babies surviving. And like you then all of a sudden have to play the baby. What I like off the bat here, looking through their list, th this is great because it's an actual main. This is a scraper. I mean, yeah, it's obsidian. 
which depending on, well, Obsidian's, uh, I mean, Obsidian's a great tool. Obsidian is crazy sharp. But I like that they call it a, sh uh, like, that they use the names that we would, as archaeologists, would use, like a chopper. And it's also really funny because all of these names that you give to stone tools back in the day are, are more, <laughs> it's just like, what is this? Oh, they used it for chopping. It's a chopper. Wait, what was this one? Oh, they were obviously scraping with it. It's a scraper. Oh, but this one down here looks a little bit different. What are they doing with this? Well, th well this one's a grinder. They, they grind stuff with it. Doesn't obsidian break easy too? Yeah, uh, it's brittle. You know, it's a lot like glass, but that's kind of part of what makes it super sharp and why it makes a really great tool in some instances. They've got choppers, scrapers, and grinders, right, as the three main tools, which are like pretty much the three main stone tools that you're gonna see because they do like the three main things. It's like you use it to, to chop or hack or break something, you use it to scrape something to like kind of clean it off or, or, or skin it, and then you use the grinding to kind of process foods and, and meal. So honestly, I mean, despite the fact that this game gets sometimes for just kind of being weird and not really like the best of what it does, um, I wouldn't be entirely opposed to running this game at some point, and maybe I'll do that in the future. But I mean, I uh, like part of me wants to give them a 10 out of 10 because because like their tools are very obviously like the most literal iteration of what a stone tool was in like the earliest days. Yeah, it's like how there's modern apes in today's world. Like like small groups of monkeys in Asia have have entered the Stone Age. They say because they're they're monkeys who are able to use choppers grinders and scrapers yeah this is the this is the whole game you're literally just like you're just an ape you're just an ape and you have a baby ape that hangs on your back and you basically just like go around and try and like live your monkey life and then when you're and then when your baby is old enough like to advance like the, the parent just gets killed by like a tiger or something and then the baby like makes its way back to camp and survives and you all of a sudden have to play the baby now i'm like this is incredibly morbid i don't know <laughs> like i don't know if i can emotionally handle this it's just watching monkeys die and it's the circle of life but yeah i mean the game the game uses very literal definitions of what a stone tool is it's it's just a, it's just a sharp rock that you hit things with to do what you want to do so in that regard they're a 10 out of 10. but the question was you know, I, I, I think it's unfair to compare it to the other games because the other games uh, function way differently. Like their tools function differently. They're, they're used much more like this. Like, like not so much Stone Age in the earliest sense of early humans. It's kind of like, oh, well, this is a culture and a society that is, you know, developed. We are anatomically modern humans developing these tools with certain levels of technology in our brains. And I think that Ancestors is just too early. So I'm going to give them a... Um, uh, uh, I'm gonna give them like an NA or not, yeah, like a like a cannot rate. I don't know, what would that be? Like X out of 10 <laughs> or question mark out of 10. Well, guys, taking a look at the stone ax here from medieval dynasty, I'm kind of cool with it. So the stone, shape and size is all pretty decent. It's got like that good kind of edge, but you don't really see much evidence of like the shaping for it. It's just kind of like, again, it's one of those rocks where it's just kind of like a blob that happens to fit the right shape and they kind of put it in. But they did a really great job with the wood, uh, with the wood wedging and the cord wrapping. Um, that definitely looks really, uh, uh, really good in that regard. But the size of the ax head and like the, the shape is all not bad, uh, actually. But yeah, I mean, so it's not perfect, but it's certainly passable as far as these things go. Uh, the pickaxe, though, um, again, is not terrible. This falls into that same trope that we've been discussing this whole video, where it's like it's got the oblong shape to the uh, to the axe head because they have to differentiate between the pickaxes. Again, I'm no, uh, I, I'm, I don't claim to know every single artifact. I feel like I've seen pickaxe heads that look like that in terms of archaeological artifacts. I just can't pinpoint one or five one right now um but otherwise same as the other one the cord the cording and the wood wrapping coming up around the sides um look pretty good and then the size in comparison to the body of both of these was also pretty good i mean looking looking at the two from medieval dynasty uh obviously the points are getting docked here because the axe isn't napped on the front to give it an edge it isn't like flint napped to give it an actual edge on the axe and the uh and the pickaxe 
head again. I know it's like, it's, it's really something that I probably shouldn't be docking points for. That one was better than a lot of the other ones that we did see, admittedly. I could give them a 9 out of 10, because they were both really good. They still didn't do the flint napping or shaping to the axe head. It was just kind of like a rock on a stick. But the cording and everything else was great, so you have to give, like, a 9 is a great number. They got a W here. <laughs> Rust. The stone pickaxe is interesting. This is the most unique iteration of this that we've seen today. And I'm kind of here for it. So the big difference here is that rather than having this big arching block of stone, right, we have a singular pointed stone affixed to a wooden like holster. You can see that they, they actually have like a little knot of the stick that's sticking out and they use that to fasten that onto. I, I love that. I love that concept. But looking at this compared to some of these other stone pickaxe tools, that's pretty close. You know, it's it's a it's a a stone head affixed. This one right here is really nice too. You see, very similar. So rust is probably one of the best pickaxes that we've seen today, which is a great start for a game that I really didn't think was going to have that good of a start. And then yeah, looking at it in context, that's a beauty. And then the stone hatchet, not bad. That's not, that's really not bad. Guys, yeah, I, I think this might be a spicy hot take and I don't know how I feel about this. This is absolutely a surprise to me. I might give Rust a 10 out of 10. I think, yeah. I'm gonna give them the 10 out of 10. Both the, the regular ax, which again has the stick come up around the edges. You can see the evidence of flint napping where they shaped it to form an edge. The size is decent. The shape is good. It doesn't have a, like a lot of flair to it. It's very straightforward. And then that especially combined with the pickaxe. I, I think I'm gonna do it, yeah. I'm gonna do it. Rust gets a, Rust gets a 10 out of 10. On their on their stone tools, I honestly was not expecting anyone to get one, but I think I I don't think I can not give it to them. That's so that's like a really well done version. So yeah, I'm impressed. Good job. But I mean, Rust is one of like the pioneers of the uh, of the survival game industry, so I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised that their that their stuff is uh, is is top notch in terms of that accuracy. But anyway. That is all that I have for you guys. Thank you so much for coming in. You have been fantastic. I have been Runemeister Chris. Let's get this raid going in about 10 seconds. I'll let the beat drop on the song and then we'll get good to go. Oh gosh, no I won't. The baby's making noises first. All right, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for coming by and hanging out. Bye.